Hello. These are the questions that you guys submitted for me to answer. And the first one is, how do I gain weight on carnivore? I've gotten this question probably more than any other question. It is not complicated. All you have to do is eat enough and provide the proper foundation for your body. And then what can help is resistance training, which gives your body a stimulus to grow. So first of all, I like to recommend one gram of protein per pound of desired body weight. Protein is a building block. You don't want to overeat it and you definitely don't want to undereat it. The bare minimum research shows the bare minimum to a protein to eat to maintain your current muscle, which is so important. That's, that's the most important thing so that we're not tapping into our own lean tissue. That amount is 0.8 times your lean body mass. So you would break that, break that down by estimating your body fat percentage, multiplying that by your current weight, and then subtracting your fat mass from your lean mass so that you have your lean mass strictly. Multiply that times 0.8. That is the amount of protein needed to maintain your current muscle. I personally go for one gram of protein per pound of desired body weight. Why? Because protein is the most satiating macronutrient because we need it more than just our muscles. We need those amino acids for our brains, for our mood, for our skin, for our bones. And I work out a lot, so I wanna be sure that I'm getting more than enough. So it really just depends on the person. And if you're coming from a way of eating that is very low protein, then just remember that you have a range. You can stick with that 0.8 times your lean body mass number or the one gram per pound of desired body weight. So that's a nice healthy range that you can work with. And just be sure that you're eating enough. So I also want to say that when I gained 65 healthy pounds in one year, I went from 69 pounds to all the way actually up to 155. And then it came back down and stays steady around 125, 130. Although right now I am around 145 and I feel stronger than ever. And honestly, I don't care if that number ever goes back down. But the point is that I didn't change anything when it went all the way up and came back down. I continued to honor my hunger and eat enough. Never once did I eat until I was uncomfortably full or stuffed or anything like that. I always just ate enough and then had one more bite. That was my rule of thumb. So the good news is you don't have to stuff yourself, but when we go carnivore, it's sometimes easy to under eat. And this is why it's very valuable to track your macros for a time. It's not something that someone has to do indefinitely, but it's certainly a very valuable tool to learn how to look at a piece of meat and guesstimate how much protein and fat is in that meat because what you can measure, you can manage. And so if you have a goal to gain weight, then you wanna be sure you're eating enough and eating the right amounts of fat and protein. Additionally, I would add that if you're already underweight or if you're just aiming for longevity and overall health, I would recommend eating at least as much fat as protein in grams, not percentages, grams. I actually think that more fat than protein is very beneficial and it's a good way to keep your body in a very supported place, especially when you're not consuming carbohydrates. The next question, it's a good time to kind of segue into it because I mentioned that when people go carnivore, it's very satiating and so we sometimes under eat. So the next question is about, this woman is asking on behalf of her husband who is six foot one, 160 pounds, he went carnivore and he's losing weight, help. She wants him to gain weight. I would recommend that you track your macros. Make sure your husband is eating at least one gram of protein per pound of desired body weight and at least equal amounts of fat in grams. It's really easy to under eat any macronutrient, any of the protein or fat. So please just be accountable with that. And that's going to be number one. You also mentioned that he just went carnivore. I think that's what's going on. So he could have actually lost a bit of inflammation. He could have been holding on to water weight because when we stop eating carbs, our glycogen stores are depleted and that glycogen causes us to hold on to fluid. So when that's depleted initially, people can lose up to 15 pounds in a very short period of time. So you also might notice that the weight loss slows down. If he is eating enough, it could have just been inflammation coming off. That's one reason I actually really enjoyed gaining weight with carnivore because what you see is the true picture. You're not pumping up your muscles with glycogen or water. It's the real thing. And I like that. So that's my recommendation. Next question. 
Cheryl, my good friend, asks, so I'm not using product in my hair, but also no styling? Correct. I have not used product in my hair since the beginning of November, and wow, it's been a while. So that means no shampoo, no conditioner. The only thing I have done is a little bit of apple cider vinegar, like once every two months, I think was the first time I tried it, just in the scalp. And I use a, a brush. It's kind of like a you know, if you know about um, brushing horses, it's kind of like a curry brush. So it, it helps to like break up any type of buildup in my scalp. I do this. And then I do that with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. That's the only thing I've used in my hair for since the beginning of November. Now, as far as styling, the only thing I do for styling is the hair plop. And I do consider that a form of styling. It takes less than a minute total. So I'm going to flip my head upside down in the shower, brush it upside down. I squeeze the excess water out with a cotton t-shirt, and then I put my hair up in the hair plop, which is a long sleeve cotton shirt. That's it, that's literally it, and this is what I get. So if you are not familiar with the hair plopping method, I have a YouTube video on it. It's so simple, it's free, and it's the best thing I learned for my curls. Someone said that she has done keto for two months and she doesn't sleep well unless she eats a bunch of fat. Why is this happening? So I love this. One of my number one tricks for people who are not sleeping is to eat a little bit of fat before bed. This helps to send the signal to your body that it's in a supported place. If you are, especially if you're pretty new to keto, so only two months, good for you, first of all. Your body is still getting used to the idea of burning fat for fuel. It might not be super comfortable with burning its own body fat throughout the night and you could also be underweight. I don't know anything about this person's weight, but if you are underweight, you absolutely need more dietary fat to make sure your body is in a supported place to burn fat for fuel. So we can burn roughly 30 calories for every extra pound of fat on our bodies. So this means that an obese person has tons of extra energy. You really don't need to worry about eating extra fat if you're fat adapted. If you're not fat adapted, you will need that dietary fat initially to get your body comfortable burning its own body fat. Now, if you're someone who is extremely fat adapted, metabolically flexible, but underweight, and you have, you know, say you're a female that's 14% body fat, which is really low, extremely low, then you're gonna need more dietary fat if you're not eating carbs. Your body will, it will keep you awake. It will wake you up because it's stressed out and it's telling you, I need fuel. Your brain is saying, I need fuel, I'm starving. So my recommendation would to be to eat enough fat. And if you are not underweight and you're still having this problem, just give it time and be sure to eat enough fat. This is a transition period of becoming fat adapted. In the beginning of my carnivore journey, I had to eat four to one fat to protein in grams. That was a lot of fat and I had to be very intentional. It was a lot of billy dough meats, lamb chops, lamb neck, things like that. Now I can eat less fat than protein and I'm totally fine. I sleep like a baby. Because I have healthy body fat on my body and because my hormones are supported. My body is metabolically flexible so my body can jump from glucose burning to fat burning without much stress or anything like that. So the longer you do this, the easier it will get for your body to burn its own fat and not stress itself out. So I would say just honor your body, give itself some extra fat, eat a little bit of fat before bedtime. For me, that was a little slice of butter with cinnamon and sea salt, it tastes like cinnamon toast. Yes, cinnamon is a higher oxalate food item, but it's actually not high in soluble oxalate. And a little sprinkle of cinnamon on your butter, even if it was soluble oxalate, would not be a problem because that's not going to even get close to 35 milligrams, which is the minimum effective dose of oxalate. Can you talk about safely cooking meat without high heat, which makes it toxic and oxidized? So this person is, the way that they asked their question kind of indicated that cooking meat at a high heat causes toxicity and oxidization. You really don't have anything to worry about unless your meat is turning black. If you have char on your meat, I would not eat that. That's when we run into issues. But if you're zapping it with your air fryer at a high temperature, which is what I do, I like to cook it at like 390 or 400 degrees, which helps to create a sear on the outside, which locks in the moisture on the inside. It's phenomenal. 
but I'm not turning it black. If I have any black in my food, I never eat it, even at Fogo. So first of all, I wouldn't be so afraid of high heat, but if you really want to not have any high temperature cooked meats for whatever reason you have, then just cook it low and slow simple. So a pressure cooker is pretty impossible to burn meat with a pressure cooker. I think it is impossible. You can overcook it. It can get dry and or tough, but you can't burn it because it's being cooked in water. That's an option is pressure cooking your meat. And I eat pressure cooked meat as much as I eat air fried meat. So today I'm having goat shanks from Billy Doe Meats. I'm pressure cooking them for four hours on high so that I can eat the bones as well as the meat. And that is a super simple way to eat meat that has not been burnt or anything like that. So I hope that helps. And I think that's all the questions. That is all the questions. So please be sure to catch me on Mondays at 10.15 Central Standard Time. I have been going live on YouTube and Instagram. That's been awesome. And then if you are interested in my spring retreat, which is coming up May 11 through 16, we're gonna have Rachel. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ribeye Rach on Instagram. She is so inspiring and she's such a sweetheart. I'm really, really excited to hang out with her. She's gonna be joining us as well. So we're gonna have her. Lisa Wiedemann and Dr. Kiltz at my retreat in May at North Myrtle Beach. If you're interested, I still do have spots open. I have like four bedrooms open. If you bring a friend, you get a discount. If you sign up for coaching, you also get a discount and it's going to be an incredible event. So please be sure to email me at Rebecca, R-E-B-E-K-A-H at tailoredketo.health if you're interested in that. Oopsies.